actually masking out all the light areas that's the dandelions and the light up in the trees i'm now wetting all of the watercolor paper with a large soft brush so i'm applying the quinacridone gold first and then a little bit of the burnt sienna just around the area where the sun is shining through with there's lots of warm color to be quite honest you can just sort of go for it here go with your instincts put down those lovely sort of warm golden colors where you kind of see fit from the photograph and just use your instincts this is wet in wet I've actually put some quite creamy yellow there as well just around where the sun is really shining through my brush is size 10 and the paper is still quite wet as are my washes this is the light air of your painting and you can just have a little bit of fun here tickling the paint onto the damp surface I'm painting the grass area now with my size 10 brush and it's mostly yellow with a tiny tiny touch of Payne's grey. If you don't have Payne's grey you could even use black if you wanted to or indigo but it's sort of it makes it kind of that lovely sort of muddy sort of light green that's in the photograph. I'm giving my painting a little tilt now adding a little bit more Payne's grey and I'm painting this in the foreground wet into wet. I've just added a little bit more Payne's Grey and I'm adding a little bit of the burnt sienna now and you get this really yummy sort of dark. It's not like a dark green, it's sort of like a muddy sort of dark green. What I loved about this photograph were these sort of, they weren't bright garish greens, they're really sort of, sort of subtle and you've got this lovely light on top of the grasses. I've swapped to my size 6 brush and I'm actually using a little bit of Prussian blue with the yellow and it's really, really creamy there this because the surface is quite wet and I want the paint to stay put so that it runs and you've got these sort of shadows in the grasses try to leave big gaps in between it's very easy to lose your lights here so treat it how you'd like you would paint a sky leaving the clouds so I'm making bigger marks in the foreground and as you see I swapped my smaller brush to make smaller marks in the distance I'm using my size 2 and size 4 brush it's the actual size 4 here and the paint's quite creamy and actually the background is quite damp now it's not too wet so the paint doesn't move too quickly so it enables me to keep the light especially right at the top of those grasses I really want to keep the light there um, but if you do lose the light I've got some suggestions later on some little tips of what to do if you lose your light which does happen to us in watercolor painting but I've got a few little rescue tips on the way I'm using my twig now to scratch into the damp paint to create some very thin lines if you don't have a twig you could use a sort of cut up plastic card just to score and scratch into the paper and it creates some lovely textures and in the background makes some smaller marks sprinkling now some sea salt on the grass area and sprinkling it on you could use table salt if you don't have sea salt but let this dry naturally and it will create some wonderful textures by lifting off the paint and as you can see before your eyes there the salt's creating its magic I'm spattering the top half of the trees now um, the painting has dried off a little bit and I'm using quinacridone gold and yellow permanent yellow if you don't have those you could use cadmium yellow and raw sea sienna and all the burnt sienna as well just so it have some warm textured colors just at the top make sure you dry your painting for the next stage I'm mixing up some of the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna you get a lovely dark green using this if you don't have burnt sienna you could use burnt umber and I'm just mixing up some creamy washes now one with more blue and one with more brown just to vary the darks and this is going to be for the foliage um, in the background here with the trees and I just want to make sure I've got some lovely creamy paint because I'm going to sponge this on and you want to do this with fairly creamy dark paint if it's very watery it just doesn't register and of course the, some of these darks are really quite strong at the top so I want to make sure I've got plenty of paint the other thing is sponging takes up so much paint so make sure you make more than you need because I can tell you, you will run out so that's just, just a little tip for you because that's happened to me many a time make sure you rinse your sponge and wring it out before you start painting with it 
So I gently tapped in some of that sort of lighter dark green, the uh, burnt sienna and a touch of the Prussian blue. And I'm just tapping now gently with my sponge. Now, if you don't have a sponge, you could use a synthetic sponge. You could roll your brush sideways or even use dry brush, side brush. And some of you might even like or prefer to do stippling and to use the point and tip of your brush to create these dark marks. I've gone in with a darker green now, just very gently, um, just where I want to put the dark wash and push it up to it. And that's why I put a darker green sort of bit of sponging there. So I've used my size 10 brush, really loaded my brush with the Prussian blue with a touch of burnt sienna. I've been very generous with the paint here, really loading the brush and just painting right up to the top of that light area of the grasses, just being careful not to paint over it. I'm using the side of my brush now just to push the paint up into the texture, but I've decided it wasn't quite working for me. So I'm actually using the sponge to kind of join that hard edge up to that textured foliage. And it's quite wet there, so it enables me to do that. I'm using the tip of my brush now just to sort of carefully paint around the tree and the top of the grasses to give a little bit of texture and also to kind of the detail even though it is in the middle sort of distance there because it's the light against dark and it's where the sun sort of hits the top of the grasses there it's quite an important area and I want to really make sure I give a little bit of detail to that. I've added a little bit more Prussian blue to that green there just to come up on the right hand side and push that dark up. So you've got that contrast between those those the lighter foliage and that dark, those dark distant trees. I'm just painting the gap between the tree there and to the left using my size 10 brush wet on dry that same green to paint in some grasses in the foreground middle ground and distance wet on dry as I move into the middle ground and distance my paint marks get smaller to create more depth it's quite fun to do this just to make this you know create this detail with the grasses and as you obviously move into middle ground just get your marks smaller but try to sort of vary the marks don't have them all looking quite stiff sort of try to sort of curve them I would even suggest practicing painting grasses as well they can be a little bit daunting so I've got a good little tip here is to actually spray them after straight after you paint them because it softens them a little bit and it sort of sort of spreads it a bit but you can still see those marks and I've mixed up a darker Prussian blue with burnt sienna and I'm just painting these in now damp into wet so the paint's creamy but the surface is wet just to sort of have them sort of they look more smudgy don't they in the photograph so you've got that little bit of detail Detail, but also you've just got those little shadows as well and uh, I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to paint the very small thin sort of branches and I thought it'd be a good idea to paint this upside down um, just to kind of make it helpful I'm going to turn my reference photograph upside down as well I'm using just the Payne's grey for this you could use indigo or black and I'm painting this wet on dry you don't have to do too many of these it's just to give that little bit of element of more textures more details in these sort of middle distant trees. I'm using my size two brush just to build up these last bits of detail of the twigs and the thin branches in this in the foliage here in these middle distant trees. Some are slightly thicker than others just to vary the details. It creates lots of texture there, but because I don't want it to look too sort of stark, I'm just using my spritzer bottle and just spraying that so it just softens it. They'll still be there, but they won't sort of stand out as much because I don't want them to come forward too much. I'm painting the tree now and this is the darkest dark. It really is quite dark in the painting. I'm using my size six brush and again it is the Payne's Grey with the burnt sienna so you could even use black and burnt umber. There's a lovely cast shadow here by the tree and I've used a mixture of Prussian blue and Payne's Grey to make it quite a cool shadow colour. I've not made it as dark as the tree because I don't want it to stand out as much 
Again, in the reference photograph, it's quite a cool sort of greeny blue. I'm just using my plastic card now just to lift out some of the sort of grasses there so it doesn't look too sort of stark and using my spritzer bottle. I'm just trying to create lots of soft atmospheric effects here rather than having everything sort of looking sort of perfect and sort of strong outlines. I'm now putting a very strong dark in the foreground just to bring it forward and again giving it a little spray with my spritzer bottle having lots of fun. So I've let the painting dry and I want to now pull out some of the sun rays. So I'm using an, an old sort of acrylic brush. You could use an old watercolour brush and I'm just sort of getting clean water and really scrubbing at the painting and then lifting off with the, the paper towel, as you can see I'm doing there. And you can repeat this several times. You've got to watch though you don't get too muddy. So make sure you keep using clean water on your brush each time, each sort of ray that you do, and then lift off with the kitchen towel. If it gets muddy, just try it again. Don't scrub too hard because you don't want to make a hole, tear a hole in your paper. Don't worry also if your painting gets a little bit muddy because I've got a little few little tricks up my sleeve to rescue you with that one. What I'm doing now is giving a little spatter just to give that little dappled light, the sun coming through that foliage and twigs. I've added a little bit of red to the yellow as well to warm it up so you've got this lovely glow with this wonderful spatter. So remember spattering, hold your brush firm and give it a good tap in the middle of the brush and do have a practice beforehand. And I thought while I'm spattering up there, I might as well give the foreground and middle ground a spatter as well with this yellow. Any yellow will do. I'm using my size 4 brush and if the paint doesn't come off the brush when you're spattering just water it down a little bit more and it should come off. Remember just have a little practice if you're not sure. So if your background isn't dark enough, which mine isn't by the way, but in, in watercolour things do dry paler and it's hard to judge the tonal value sometimes, I feel like I need to add a little bit more dark to this these sort of distant trees where it's very dark green. So I'm adding Prussian blue and the burnt sienna and it's quite creamy onto the wet surface. You saw I very gently wet the background with my large soft brush. Make sure it is a soft brush or it will disturb the paint underneath even if the paint has dried. My painting is dry in the foreground and what I'm doing is I've removed the masking fluid of all the dandelions and I'm using this old acrylic synthetic brush. Do not use your best brushes for this and I'm sort of scrubbing at the dandelions just to kind of soften them because when you remove masking fluid you can get this very hard stark edge and I want to give a glow around it. So I'm just going over each of the dandelions and giving a little scrub and then dabbing it with my tissue as you saw I was doing there and as you can see it softens them. It definitely softens the outer edge and you may need to work at them a little bit especially in the darker areas um, just try not to scrub too hard because you might tear a hole in your paper so there is a sort of fine line to this you can use a q-tip or something like that whatever works best for you but it does create a really nice effect give that lovely soft glow what I'm doing now is I'm just painting some little bit of dark it's the burnt sienna with a with the Payne's grey quite watered down and I'm putting a little dot in the middle of the dandelions then just pulling down a little bit a little bit like the the photograph you don't want to put too much details because they're quite small but just enough and I'm just sort of just bringing the stem down into the sort of grasses making it disappear as well what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a little bit of white on the sort of edge of this as well just to give it a bit of light while I had the white on my brush I thought I might as well give this foreground a spatter so it looks like little tiny dandelions it's quite effective I do love using white gouache but if you don't have that you could use white watercolor paint or even white acrylics I've removed the masking fluid on the top half of the painting now and I'm glazing some of the quinacridone gold over the top of those white marks just to push them back a little bit and it sort of gives that lovely glow as well to the to on top of the masking fluid and I'm using my size 14 brush and this is wet on dry. 
once you've finished that I'm just putting a little bit of yellow mixed with white just on the top part of these grasses where the sunlight is the strongest there and I'm using a little you know just a mixture really a creamy mixture of the yellow and white and I'm giving it a little bit of a spray now with my spritzer bottle you don't have to do this but I I kind of like to mix things up a little bit and keep things loose in my watercolor painting and it, it'll run down sort of through the middle and down to the bottom I feel like I've lost a little bit of my sunlight so I'm using some white paint you don't have to do this because you may not have lost your sunlight but this is what you can do to remedy it if you have I'm using my size 2 brush very small brush here just to put a bit of white gouache on and then I'm spraying it with my spritzer bottle and giving it a little tilt and I put some white at the top of the field there as well letting it all run down just to see what sort of exciting things can happen so the painting is damp I've removed my framing tape just to have a good look at it to see if I need to do any more I thought I'd just put a little bit more yellow in these rays of sunshine just sort of damp into damp you know here and there less is more and I'm actually really saying this quite loud inside my head as well thinking no, don't do too much and I'm putting a little bit of white there as well just on the right hand side I'm barely touching the paper I'm just putting soft sort of scuffs of paint to finish off and here is the finished painting I really hope you enjoy this tutorial all the spritzing creating all those sun rays etc if you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to support the content that I create here on YouTube why not think about joining my patreon membership just click patreon in the description below you will get access to my exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches thank you so much for watching happy painting bye for now